Hello once again fellow girls, guys and gamers, this is Small Archangel bringing you a brand new series of Ostriv, which is an early access game which is currently not even on green light, but it may be on green light on Steam in the future. You can keep your eyes out open for that. Otherwise, if you're interested in checking it out, I will provide a link to the dev page in the description. So uh, check it out if you want to. A uh, few words on the game before we dive in. Ostriv is, uh, in the words of the developer, a city-building game that puts you in the role of a governor of an 18th century town to challenge your creative skills in management abilities. Dive into story mode and decide the fate of your country or just build your city for fun in sandbox mode. Now, as far as I'm aware at the moment, as I say, it's in early access. I don't think that the story mode is currently available. It's basically a sandbox at the moment. But if you like games like Banished, you'll probably like this one. The game is being created by a single developer who's uh, from the Ukraine and whose name I will probably completely mangle with my English tongue, but uh, Yeveni uh, from the Ukraine. And uh, there's more information about him and the game on the development page, as I say. Link is in the description. Okay, guys, so we're going to give this a go. Now, I have had a little try at this um, off camera just to see kind of how it works out. Uh, and I should just give us a shout out to Kathom, who's a sub of mine, and also uh, someone who plays played on the Conan Exiles server um, as well as Nushaka and so uh, thanks Kathom for, for gifting me this game because uh, I said I was interested in giving it a go. So we're going to give it a try. Uh, we're going to start a new game of course. Uh, options wise I've got everything kind of pretty much as you know, uh, ultimate graphics, etc. So you'll get a true taste of the graphics, uh, reduced slightly by in the whole editing process, of course, but I, I do it as HD as I can. Um, and uh, so we're just going to head in here. It's just mouse and keyboard, this. We've got three maps at the moment to choose from. These three maps here, and you can see the lots of woodland there and the river in each case so in each case you can see where the camp is it's this little circle here which you could probably just about make out there's a camp there's a camp there's a camp now I don't know I think all of them have potential uh, there are bridges in the game so you are able eventually to build a bridge across the river uh, in order to enable yourself to um, to uh, make utilize the whole of the map area so Let's see, we want somewhere, every single one of them is next to a wood, but this one looks like it might have more woodland nearby, so I'm going to go for that one there. Here we go, and we're straight in, uh, and uh, we've got just a little camp here, so basically we're a pioneering town, just setting up in uh, the... 18th century in Eastern Europe and you can zoom pretty far in and you can see all these little guys down here and one of the things I like about this uh, the graphics is not too bad okay they're floating over the top of these benches but each of these people have got names which again I probably wouldn't be able to pronounce properly we've got men and we've got women and they've all got names they've all got um, ages down there as well and it also tells you their education levels now at the moment we can't do anything about educating uh, because education is a work in progress as is health and religion but this shows that the roadmap will include all of those things in future so that's something to look forward to okay you can pan around with your middle mouse button and the mouse of course most of this is kind of point and click, so you can drink your tea with the left hand, which I quite like as well. Um, and uh, yeah, this is this is pretty much what we've got so far. We've got nine families. Now, we are running against the clock, so I'm going to keep this very much on slow time for the moment. And we are creeping through March, so we better get going because we've got things to do before the winter hits. Again, if you've played Banished, you'll kind of know what I'm talking about there. Uh, okay, so I'm not going to place my forestry first thing we need and it tells us here build forestry for wood production well yeah we've got a certain number of oh dear me i'm not sure if i can change that in the settings sometimes i don't like edge scrolling sometimes i do maybe i just need to get used to it a little bit um we have got 
a certain amount of uh, stocks in our stores here. So you can see that. Oh, that's a camera sensor. There it is. Iron 10 nail 1600 thatch 12. So not a great deal of some items. And we really don't have very much wood at all. Hence, we have to go straight into our production tab here and find forestry. And there it is. And we can rotate this by using the R and... Oh, that's not right. The R and the T buttons. Okay, so I'll do that. And I'm going to rotate this until the uh, entrance to the forestry place is actually facing towards our uh, our nascent town. Uh, I'm going to put that just there so we don't actually have to... Yeah, it can't be replaced on trees because they can't cut trees down until you've placed the forestry building. So there we go. And this is what I really love about this game. As soon as we do this, we see these guys are galvanized into not very rapid action, but you get to see every single stage of the building process. And uh, yeah, you might not always want to do that, but that's what fast forward is for. But for the moment, as I say, we are going to keep this in slow-mo just because, and we might speed it up a bit later, but we are up against the clock. Basically, what we have to do is make sure that Every single one of these nine families that's in these nine tents, Father Ivan, uh, the Hanich family, uh, the Berezovitz Beres family, all of these families have each got to have a house by the time we get to winter. Otherwise, they will leave. In fact, there are many, many circumstances under which your people will leave. <laughs> so we have to try and avoid that if we can. And unlike a lot of other city building games as well, um, the difference here is that um, you have literally got, we've got 22 people here. You can see we've got, uh, if we look at this, we see our population. We can see we've got 18 adults um, and we've got six working at the moment and three laborers. Um, you can see our migration status. So we can bring in more migrants, but only if we improve the water supply, provide a market and some extra housing. That means housing not only for the current families, but housing over and above so that there are free houses for homes people to move into. You could also see what other assets we have, including animals, boats and wa you know, wagons and plows and all of that good stuff. So we're not going to have that for a little while yet. And uh, the population will also age up as we go. So we're going to need some new workers in there. I've never seen any children, so I don't know if they actually have any. But back to the building action. So... If we zoom in here, you can kind of hear the birds and things. You can also hear them doing their thing. And you can see them placing all of the... Yeah, that's a little bit twitchy, that. I might have to see if I can uh, adjust that slightly. It's a little bit too jerky for my liking. Sorry, folks. Um, so they're placing all of the foundation posts. And if we just put that on slightly faster, you can see them literally bringing the resources in with their carts there. And then dropping off the resources. So we have several... If we highlight this, we have three laborers at the moment. The workers will do the actual construction. The laborers are bringing the resources so that construction can be done. And you can see up here kind of a progress bar, which tells you of the, what resources are required as well. So we just need wood and nails for this. And we must have some wood, though I didn't see any in the store. Um, we must have had some, otherwise we wouldn't have been able to place, uh, build the place to start with. So there we go. All right, and now they're putting all that together now. And we're getting the floor on there as well. And then they'll put the walls post up and the walls themselves. Look at that. You can see everything that they do. Um, another thing that I'm not entirely convinced about in this, but I can kind of see it might possibly be authentic, is that the women, there are only certain jobs that the women will do. And I think that probably is authentic. But it is frustrating when you've only got like nine or ten men to deal with that, the women most of the time just sit on their backsides by the fire, and that's pretty much all that they do. And I don't believe them incapable of doing anything. There are certain jobs, when you get that far, that the women are capable of doing, uh, and you can assign them to those, like the farm, when you get a farm up and ring and stuff. But a lot of the jobs, particularly early in game, when you really have gotten many people, uh, yay, there we go, it's done. Jolly good. Now we have to build houses for all the families in the camp. This is where we really start getting... Uh, on the case so we're going to put we've got immediately one worker there but if we have two workers in the forestry building then we'll get more um we'll get more wood because we're going to need that for building houses also now there's something else we're going to need to make houses we're also going to require and again in our production tab we're going to require thatch 
and a clay pit. So we're going to have to build a clay pit. And again, we want all our resources relatively nearby at the moment. So I'm going to place a clay pit down here. Now, this doesn't need to be built, so that's a good thing. And we'll just turn that around. Again, we want the entrance as close to here as we can. Um, and we'll just put that... I don't want it there, actually. Let's put it over here. We can put this literally anywhere, so we may as well put it... We can't put it too close, of course. We may as well put it next to the forestry. Oh, I like it a little bit further away. Let's put it next to this forest over here. Let's just turn this around like this. You can see why I like things on the slow-mo. There we go. Okay. No. I will put it down here after... You know what? Does it really matter that much? No, it shouldn't do, should it? And then the other thing we need, as I say, is thatch. So we're going to need a thatch... Where are you, thatch place? A thatchery. There we go. Now, this does need to be near to reeds. So we will place that directly next to the, uh, the clay pit. And this does actually need building as well. So we've got three labors immediately leaping into very slow action there um, with their three carts. That's why you'll always get three labors because you've got three carts. Now, if we build a bigger cart park, which we could do. There we go. There's our car park there. But it's not really uh, a major priority at this point. Then we could possibly get our people, you know, more people doing sort of more uh, running about, more labouring. But uh, OK, we've got two guys there. Yes, we have. But you can see how uh, with a population of... Uh, however many guys we've got it doesn't say water supply it says is poor now we do have a well but the water supply is poor because the water well has only just been placed and therefore default is a part of the default camp but it's presumably only just been placed which means it's not full yet which means that the water supply will resolve itself later on and as structures can't actually be demolished in the game at the moment that's not yet been implemented uh, i've made the mistake of putting things in and then finding actually i can't remove them and uh, wells are certainly in that category so there we go okay so that thatchery is going to be built now you can see all the guys are on the case but I am going to get started with the houses straight away as well. Now, the nice thing about these houses is we've only got one model of village house here. I think later on we'll probably get the opportunity to make more. Now, that needs to remove six trees as a result. I don't really, really, really want to do that. Uh, one of the nice things about the houses in this game is the way that they all are slightly, slightly different. So, uh, if I click on that again, it might look a little bit different. There we go. This one's... Uh, yeah, like that. And then if I click on it again, it's got the wood on the other side. And then if I click on it again, it's... Yeah, so you get slightly different permutations of the same thing. So they don't all look absolutely the same. And also I like the way that they kind of snap together like this. So we're going to place our first house right there. Uh, and then I think we'll make uh, a couple more as well. This one is going to require... Um, is going to require, even if we do turn it round, is going to require some, um, that's not going to snap to there either, but it's going to remove, need us to remove some trees too, which will take some time. Therefore, I'm not really willing to do that at the moment. So we're going to put our second house right there. And as I say, we're going to need nine of those by the time we reach December or whenever the snow falls. There we go. So we've got our thatchery in production. Um, food, of course, is something we're also going to have to think about. Now, one thing you can do is you can put your uh, building on pause so whatever it is that you're building you can put certain structures on pause if you want to prioritize others so I'm just going to go ahead right now and uh, we're going to place all of the things that we're really going to need like I'd like a fishing uh, dock because that doesn't require too much in the way of resources but will provide us with some food and uh, it doesn't take too long before all your people are running out of food. We're also going to need a farm. Um, and uh, we're going to get on with and build one of those as well. But I think, first of all, yeah, we probably do want to perhaps make ourselves a fishing dock. And again, I can kind of put that here. That's uneven terrain, but I don't know if that means we can't place it there. We could put our fishing dock over there, possibly. It's a little bit of a way away, but I don't think it's going to be too far away. Perhaps we're better off putting it 
really close to here. This can kind of almost be our industrial zone. There we go. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to risk doing this. And we'll put it on full speed mode and watch them spring into action. So our thatcher is not quite finished, but it's not far off now. But dang there we go. So we'll have one worker at the thatchery. But you can see how all these people will end up, you know, we, each project then um, takes more of your workers away. And it's going to be a while before we can get some more workers in because we're going to have to build a market plus some extra ho homes before we can even attract any people to town. In the meantime, we're going to have to deal with a very limited number of uh, workers that we actually have. And uh, if I show you with the thatchery here, in our higher options, we can hire men, but the women are greyed out, and you cannot hire women. So that means that, yeah, we are very limited. We've got an equal number of men and women, um, nine men and nine women. And open vacancies, we've got 16 or 12, but they're all for men, not for women at all. And we've got seven women looking for jobs and we cannot uh, give them any jobs because the same thing here. Higher options, women can't be foresters. Uh, bit sexist. If you ask me, another thing I like is the way that the uh, the, the villages actually create uh, pathways and little roadways um, just where they travel re frequently. So you end up with this kind of lovely pattern, where you, which means you can see exactly where all of the individuals are actually traveling. Um, the other thing we can do, I'll just put it on slightly sort of uh, slightly fast mode there. I'll just click on this dude here. Show path. OK, and then we can follow where he's actually going. At the moment, he's not going very far, but <laughs> you can see where he's going. Oh, that's finished. Niceness. OK, so if I just put that down and we can also find where he lives. He's currently living in this tent here. But now one of our homes is finished. One of these tents will be a family that's moving into it. Which family is lucky there? This family is moving into that house. So they are the lucky few who are moving into that house. Our thatchery is finished. Our fishing dock is not next on the list, but is still being built. Um, but uh, yes, production seems to have ceased for the time being. I'm not quite sure. But once the family has moved out of this tent, this one, it will just disappear. So if we watch this tent now, it will just vanish. And gradually the pathways that lead to it will overgrow with grass again. Uh, and we won't be able to see that. There we go. They've taken all of their things and they're off to their brand new home, which will even get smoke coming out the chimney. And it looks quite kind of homely and nice. It's got some little trees in the garden which grow as time goes by and even turn as the, the seasons change as well which is lovely there's no fence along this side because of course we've got another house abutting up against it and hopefully we've got some dudes moving in to do some work there yes we have so we don't want too many building projects on the go at the same time because if we do that then we're going to be stretching our workforce too thin but at the same time as i say we are up against the clock we've got to rehome each of these families um, and so I'm going to look for the next place where I can put uh, a house. Now, there should be some way of getting our, um, our, let's see, we should be able to get, we can remove a specific tree by clicking on it and choosing remove. Now, I've never been able to get that to work because, um, demolish, no, we don't want to do that. You see, if I click on that tree, uh, it doesn't really work. So I don't really know um, quite how I'm supposed to do that. It doesn't seem to be uh, doesn't seem to be implemented just yet. But I'm thinking basically of putting a house there, which means that we're, we're not really going to be able to put a house there because there's a tree in the way. But it helps to not build your houses in a great big circle around anyway, because we're going to need roads going through in any case. So, uh, but I will place another one here. We'll just t turn it around a little bit more. So uh, we're building them kind of in a circle. There we go. There we go. Uh, and that will be three out of nine. So you can see we've got quite a lot of work ahead of us. And we are going to have to put one here. Uh, now the people might possibly, the foresters might possibly actually uh, uh, get around to moving these trees anyway. 
let's just see, move this forwards ever so slightly, they'll only need to move five trees, there we go, okay, so they are prioritising our fishing hut a little bit at the moment, that's got one worker building it, and this has got two labourers taking resources, it's a good idea to have two things on the go at the same time, because uh, the labourers can fetch and carry resources at the same time as the builders are building somewhere where the resources have already been taken. So you can see our second house is already well underway, which is fantastic because we are now into May. Shocker. And it is now finished, so that's fantastic. So that's another house, which another family then will be able to move into. I'm not sure who's moving this time. Uh, we can probably see them moving their stuff from their tent. It must be this one here. No, it's not. It's... I have no idea. I cannot see who is moving at this point. I think they already have. There we go. So we've got two spaces where there used to be tents and we have two homes and we have another home under construction there. Meanwhile, our fishing hut, our fishing cabin, they're building whole sections of dock. Quite impressive. He's just walking on water there. So we can see, oh, that one's got lots of workers underway with it as well. And once this is crafted, we're going to have to get one guy at least doing some fishing there. And then hopefully he'll be setting up some fishing stores, which is going to help not only with keeping our own people for the moment fed, but also during the winter particularly. But it's also going to help with the uh, market in the future. And we're going to be able to have that market to bring some more people into town. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we're going to get that underway. And then we've got a third house here. And we've got our fourth house there. So we're still going to need to put in position lots of other homes. But I also want to build a farm. Uh, now, we're probably, our sowing season is already done, so our, our farm, in any case, is not going to get underway until after the winter, and this is the problem we always have, because we just can't get a farm up and running straight away or soon enough. That said, farm workers can be female, uh, but the construction has to be done by the guys, so it can be a little bit uh, difficult to deal with from that point of view. So, I'm going to put my farm outside of this lot sort of fair I'm going to put it on pause for the moment but we just need to allocate a space for it and there's a lot of big flat space over here and I don't mind that this is going to be uh, a decent distance away from all of the rest that's absolutely fine to me I'm going to put it this way around like that so it's kind of facing our town and then we'll leave deliberately a gap uh, so that our road can come through there and we'll put our farm there. We need that. And here we're going to put this on pause. Boom, there we go. Construction is paused. So we know that they're not going to prioritise that over and above anything else. They're going to carry on with our, home, our homes because they're the ones that we really need. Oh, something's done. Yay, our fishing hut's done. Let's have one worker for that. Boat number one. Ah, let's not have a worker for that. Let's just cancel that out because they need a boat. Now, ordering a boat, we actually need a carpentry. For that, which means, yeah, we're going to need to build a carpenter's workshop first. So in actual fact, there's no point in wasting any workers on that just yet because we're going to need our carpenter's place first. So housing is definitely going to be a priority first, uh, but we're going to need a carpentry um, and we're going to need a smithy because we're going to run out of nails at some point as well. We've got nine, 928 nails, so we're all right for nails at the moment. But with the way we're building houses, we're going to definitely need one of those before too much longer. Okay, need to remove two trees. That's just how it's going to have to be. There we go. And we'll place another one next to that. Let's just turn it a little. And I think that's as many of them as I probably want in a continuous row. Uh, and then we're probably going to have like a route through that way and a route through this way towards our farm as well there we go okay we're going to put them on fast forward because we want to see if we can get all of these homes built in time yay our third home is complete fantastic so there goes another family off to their new house uh we've got one two three and another one is still under construction here and um, we've got two more there so after these are finished we're going to have six which means we're going to need another three the obvious place to put them is going to be down here whoopsie the other way around uh close to our 
fishing uh, a fishing hut uh, the closer to their jobs people live the better uh, we're off really the less traveling around they have to do let's just turn that a tweak more like that and I don't oh, uneven terrain ah it won't place there okay that's unfortunate well maybe in that case we're gonna have to let me just turn up myself around our farm is over there I think maybe what we have to do is this no I don't want that to meet up kind of like that and then we'll put another one alongside that if we can and I don't know that we can I don't think it's gonna let me because it's uneven okay so things are hotting up now literally it's July um, uh, 1721 as we can see the specific date but this house is coming on a pace uh, we also have um, another house here which is currently I think all of the people attending to all the workers attending to focus on one project at once oh no there we go we've got them all on this one now <laughs> they kind of don't know which way to put themselves so generally speaking it seems that you can have about two uh, two things ongoing at the same time which means that our farm once we've got once it looks like our houses are all going to be ready in time i'll get them working on the farm but then we are going to need ourselves a smithy uh and uh, a carpentry uh workshop as well um so at the moment i'm kind of wondering whether we should have those down here or somewhere possibly close to there they should in any case be somewhere sort of fairly nearby um so I'm not sure whether we should uh, get rid of these houses here and move them a little bit or maybe we should try and put them here. I don't know in any case. We should be able to put them somewhere uh, without closing ourselves off too much. We've got our forestry here. In some ways it would make sense to have them sort of behind there. But because uh, this bit in the centre I want to keep kind of open for putting our market and our town hall there we go we've got six finished homes this is fantastic and it's august so not a moment too soon we've got another one coming along here um and then we've got these two here so i will just pop that on slow-mo for the moment um because then they'll turn their attention to these ones over here and uh, we want to see if there yeah if there's anything else we want to do there we perhaps need let me just see if there's anywhere else where we could put a house that would make good sense like for example we could put houses behind the current row like this uh is that going to be efficient though i'm not entirely sure no i'm going to leave things the way they are but i am going to go into our production tab let's just put that on mid fast medium speed we're going to go into our production tab um, and we're going to put we're going to have a look we're not there's no point in making a cow shed or, or a windmill until our farm's complete of course nor that nor a slaughterhouse or a tannery uh, or a hay dryer uh, but a carpentry and a smithy well we're going to need those we're going to need both of those things so let's see where we can realistically put these where it's going to be useful we've got some houses here um let's see can we put we could put it here but that's uneven terrain we're going to need a throughway here to get to our farm over there we could perhaps put our smithy here let's just see if i can keep hitting the wrong one this way like this we could perhaps put our smithy there is that the front of it i believe it is there we go I think I heard another house finish just then. So we'll place the smithy here. And then it really is going to be sensible for our carpentry to be close to our forestry shop. Now, is that a carpenter's I've got? It looks exactly like a forestry place to me. Let me just make sure I've got the carpentry right. It does look kind of right to be. It does look kind of similar, to be honest. Let's just see. I'm going to have to get them to remove trees in order to place it there. Um... On the other hand, maybe we can pop it here uh, or there. But I want a throughway there, so uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe down there is going to be a good place because otherwise it's going to have to be outside this circle. Or we could just put it. We could be, put it behind there. We could put it just behind 
uh, the foresters, uh, the forestry building. Uh, they would need to remove quite a lot of trees, but those trees will not go to waste. They will be used um, in any case. So, Okay, it's now September, so we're nearly there. We're getting to autumn time now. If we have a look at the trees, they're still not turning, so there's time left. I've placed our forestry, or rather our carpentry, building behind the forester's hut because that is most uh, efficient uh, from a point of view of moving the wood from one place to another. And also, the foresters can go straight out the back of the forestry building to remove the trees uh, that are needed to uh, create the space there as well. Um, Housing-wise, we just have one family left to rehome, so we're doing really, really well in that regard. Um, and uh, also, we've got our smithy, uh, which is uh, well underway as well. Um, and then once we've got our carpentry, uh, our carpentry place, we can order a boat for um, for our uh, boathouse here as well, and we can have a, an we can have an employee there, um, and then they can be creating some fish for us, and we can also then get our farm underway as a winter project, a winter building project, and hopefully get our uh, people well fed for the future as well. So. Um, this is doing really, really well. But for this episode, we're just going to content ourselves with getting all of our families homed. And it looks like we're nearly there because this one here, there we go. This is nearly done now. How are we doing with this? We've got two laborers on site getting some uh, resources there, but we're well through. We just basically need, I think, some more clay for a bit more wool and then basically the thatch for the roof. And there we go. The roof is going on. And that is finished. Fantastic. So that is that. Our last house is finished, which means all our people are homed in a lovely little circle. Isn't it looking home homely? And we've got a prompt. You're running out of nails. Need to build a smithy. Well, do you know what? We're already well underway there. Uh, we're looking for builders, but they're not building anything else at the moment. So uh, the smithy is definitely going to be first thing that's, uh, that's on the list there. After which we have uh, the carpentry. I've still got my farm on pause, but basically we've missed the sowing season already. So there is no point in uh, prioritizing the farm until the snow has actually fallen. Um, and at that point, hopefully our smithy and our carpentry will be already done. Um, and then we can get the farm built and possibly some other means of food production over the winter. Uh, we can get our fishermen on the case, apart from when the river <laughs> freezes over, which is why I want to get the carpentry done first, really. Um, and then we can, yeah, perhaps build a mill and think about some sort of cow sheds and some trade and things as well. So, guys, that's our first episode of Ostriff. I hope you're liking it so far. I do love the odd little city builder. I've always been a fan of SimCity way back in the day um, and various other ones as well. As I say, I've tried Banish too, but uh, this one just seems to be a little bit different. I do like the sort of black and white-esque way in which they sort of make their own roads, which means that we don't need to. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's looking good so far. So, so far, we're, we're managing to do pretty well so i hope you guys have enjoyed this video if you have you know what to do hit that like button button and also feel free to leave me uh comments hints and tips if you know this game better than i do and uh yeah do feel free to check it out via the link in the description and i will see you guys for the next episode or the next video till then keep gaming stay happy bye bye for now